Hello everybody. So now we are moving to the second part of uh, the mechanism of addition polymerization and under this uh, part we will be dealing with the cationic and the anionic polymerization. So before I proceed to uh, with this lecture, uh, I hope you have understood the concept regarding the reactive intermediates. Uh, let me just give a brief about the reactive intermediates. They are nothing but reactive species and they are highly unstable and they are their existence is only for a split second but they are useful to initiate the process of the polymerization process giving rise to the addition polymers now uh, there are three basically there are three different classes of uh, the reactive intermediates the first is the free radical and the second is the carbocations and the third is the carb anions and uh, whereas the, the free radicals they are generated as a result of the homolytic fission of organic molecules whereas the heterolytic fission of organic molecules give rise to a carbocation and a carb anion. Now the free radicals they uh, have uh, a lone pair of uh, usually a lone pair of electron or uh, either a single electron excess or uh, they can have more excess electrons whereas the carbocation has a net positive charge and the carb anion has a net negative charge. Now uh, uh, based on the attack of the reactive intermediates the addition polymers are classified into three broad categories and the, the one the addition polymers that are uh, excited or they are activated by a free radical gives rise to a free radical addition polymerization and the addition polymers that are attacked by the cations uh, give rise to a cationic uh, addition polymerization and those that are attacked by a carb anion are uh, known as the uh, carb anionic addition polymerization. So that means we will be dealing with the cationic and the adionic polymerization. We have already finished the free radical addition polymerization reaction. So that means the, under the cationic uh, uh, addition polymerization, the attack is via a carbocation and under the anionic polymerization, the attack is via a carb anion. So let us first come to the topic under cationic polymerization. Here as I said that the, uh, the attack is via a cation. That means the cation is a usually a H plus ions and this H plus ion is liberated either from Lewis acids or they are liberated from very strong acids. Now the monomers that are attacked by this, uh, uh, by this activating species is uh, that is the H plus ions is usually uh, a, uh, a, uh, the monomer unit contains a double bond and in besides the presence of a double bond there usually is a presence of electron releasing substituents like the alkyl groups, the phenyl groups or the vinyl groups. Now these groups they help in the attack of a proton that means H plus ions. Now the cationic polymerization is initiated at low temperature in methylene chloride solution. Now uh, as we have discussed under uh, the free radical polymerization reaction, the cationic polymerization reaction mechanism proceeds by three steps. First is the chain initiation, second is the chain propagation and third is the chain termination. Now under the chain initiation, the cation is liberated that is the cation in this case is a H plus ions that is the proton and the proton is liberated by the action of uh, the strong acids like H2SO4 or HF. So you can see here that this is the, this is the proton that is liberated from the acids. Now similarly the protons that is the H plus ions are also liberated by the action of water on the Lewis acids. The Lewis acid in this case is a boron trifluoride. Now once the proton is liberated, this proton will attack a alkene monomer to give rise to a carbocation. Now as, as I said earlier, the carbocation has a net positive charge that you can see in this, uh, uh, in this reaction. So the monomer, it must have uh, besides the double bond, it should also have a, uh, the presence of uh, electron releasing substituents like the alkyl groups, the phenyl groups, the vinyl groups and the net result uh, of a chain initiation reaction is a carbocation. Now it is this carbocation that will attack the further monomeric uh, molecules to give rise to a chain, chain type reaction and finally giving rise to a polymer. 
So now let us see uh, what happens in the chain propagation. Now in this chain propagation, you can see that the carbocation that was formed in the previous uh, uh, slide attacks a monomer. Now the monomer here again contains a double bond and this uh, uh, X represents a the presence of an electron releasing substituent and the, the resulting uh, product is a carbocation is again another carbocation and this is evident by the presence of a positive charge on the terminal carbon atom. Now under the chain termination what happens is that the cationic polymerization reaction is very sensitive to solvent. So that means if uh, uh, there is a presence of a nucleophile in the solvent then the chain growth will stop and the terminal carbocation will combine with the nucleophile that is present in the solvent or the terminal carbocation can lose a proton. The, the, that means the, the positive charge that is attached to the terminal carbon atom uh, will, will be lost giving rise to a polymer. Now let us come to the anionic polymerization. Now uh, under the anionic polymerization the monomer units uh, besides the presence of a double bond or a triple bond must have an electron. Uh, attracting substituent that means they are easily attacked by uh, the nucleophiles now the nucleophiles are nothing but electron rich species and these nucleophiles are the uh, are the initiators under the anionic polymerization process now <clears throat> Now usually the butyl lithium or the ethyl lithium that means the alkali metal alkyls, the alkali metal amides and the Grignard's reagent these are the initiators of this type of polymerization reaction and these initiators they attack the monomers to give rise to carb anionic intermediates. The reactive intermediates are carb anions and the mechanism as usual uh, is proceeds by three steps. First is the chain initiation, second is the chain propagation and third is the chain termination. Now in the chain initiation you can see that this is a, uh, uh, this is a ethyl lithium and this ethyl lithium uh, is the initiator of under this process and this uh, ethyl lithium it uh, proceeds to give rise to a ethyl carbonyl plus a lithium ion. So this ethyl carbonyl is evident by the uh, uh, by the net negative charge you can see a negative charge in this so this ethyl carb, ion, carb anion is a reactive intermediate and this reactive intermediate now attacks a uh, monomer and the monomer here is uh, uh, is uh, the presence of a double bond and the x substituent is a electron attracting species now the resulting uh, product that is formed as a result of this uh, reaction is again another carb anion and you can see a net negative charge here. Now these are reactive intermediates that means they are, their existence is for a split second. You cannot isolate such compounds but they are present during the reaction uh, of the formation of the polymers. Now under the chain propagation this carb anion that is that, that was formed in the previous uh, as evident from the previous slide it attacks another similar monomer, <coughs> monomer to give rise to another long carb anion. Now here this carb anion is evident by the presence of a negative charge. Now under the chain termination again the anionic polymerization process is uh, very sensitive to solvent and in the presence of water the the, uh, the the polymerization process terminates to give rise to a uh, addition polymer. Now let us see what is the difference between free radical and ionic polymerization. The ionic polymerization are cationic and anionic and this is the free radical polymerization. So let us see the broad uh, differences that exist between these three different classes of the addition polymerization process. Now first category is the monomers involved. Now under the free radical you can see that the monomers involved are the uh, presence of double bonds that is ethylene, butadiene, isoprene, acrylates, vinyl chloride. Now under the cationic uh, polymerization process the monomers involved are they must have besides the double bond they must have electron releasing substituents like the methoxy group or the ethoxy group. Now under the anionic polymerization, addition polymerization uh, reaction the monomers involved are must have uh, a double bond and besides the presence of a double bond there should be electron elect uh, attracting substituents like the vinyl cyanide the methyl methacrylate etc 
Now let us come to the second broad category that is the initiator. Now we very well know that under free radical the initiator is a benzoyl peroxide or ter di tertiary butyl peroxide. And under the cationic uh, polymerization reaction the initiator is a is a uh, uh, is the Lewis acid or strong mineral acids which ultimately give rise to a H plus ion that is a cation. Now under the anionic uh, polymerization uh, process the initiator is a strong base like alkali metals, sodium or potassium amide or the Grignard's reagent and the intermediates. Now the third broad category is the intermediates. Now under the free radical uh, polymerization process the intermediate involved is a free radical that means the benzoyl peroxide or the di tertiary butyl peroxide they give rise to a free radical whereas under the cationic uh, polymerization process the intermediates involved is a carbocation now the protons that are that is that are liberated by the action of Lewis acids or by the action of strong mineral acids they give rise to a carbocation they attack the monomers to give finally a carbocation now under the anionic polymerization process the initiators are strong bases and these strong bases they give rise to a carb anionic intermediate now let us see the reaction conditions which uh, favor the uh, free radical cationic and the anionic polymerization process. Uh, under the free radical polymerization process the, the temperatures should be greater than or equal to 50 degrees centigrade whereas under the ionic polymerization that means the cationic and the anionic process a temperature of 0 degrees uh, centigrade will favor the cationic and the anionic polymerization process. Now, as I said earlier that the free radicals in a polymerization process, they are not sensitive to polarity of the solvent, whereas the ionic polymerization, they are highly sensitive to the changes in the polarity of the solvent. So, we have finished the topic under the mechanism of addition polymerization. I hope you have understood the definition of addition polymers and uh, uh, how the uh, addition polymers are different from the condensation polymers and what are the different uh, uh, examples that come under the addition polymers and how the addition polymers are formed. Now uh, uh, the mechanism under the mechanism of the addition polymerization we are having three different classes uh, that is the free radical addition polymers, the cationic uh, the addition polymers and third is the anionic addition polymerization reactions and these are uh, classified based on the nature of the reactive intermediates. So I hope you have understood the definition of reactive intermediates and what are the different classes of reactive intermediates and what is the, the, uh, the structural features of a free radical, a carbocation and carbanion. Now all these uh, uh, basic uh, fundamental knowledge regarding reactive intermediates will be very useful in a in our uh, in your pre, in your very future uh, uh, topic that is the reaction mechanism so i hope you have understood this lecture and you have enjoyed uh, uh, this uh, lecture and if you have any doubts or queries please uh, jot down your queries or doubts and we'll be solving your problems very soon in uh, the interactive uh, classes that will be held in Microsoft Teams. Thank you.